Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an awesome, awesome day. My name is Jorge and I believe we can all have a beautiful home on any budget. And if you believe the same, hit that subscribe button. Today I'm sharing with you a really, really cool DIY. It's probably my favorite so far and that is this long tray that is inspired by restoration hardware, kind of. Um, you can totally customize this and I'll explain soon. But first, let's talk about why I'm doing this. Of course, one of the stores that I love um, getting inspiration from is Restoration Hardware. And I think for me, it's scale. Everything there is larger. Um, and although my home is not very large, it's pretty small actually, having fewer items such as this, but larger, I think it helps create that, uh, not well, high-end sort of feel, but just minimal is what I'm going for. The Shag Green Tray from RH, um, and that's the one that really inspired me. And what I like about that one, of course, it's the size, it's big, but that is about three or $400. And no, 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 we're not paying that here. This right here cost me about $30. Making this is actually really, really easy. I decided to stain this black because it, to me, it feels a little bit more high end than just spray painting it. I like to see that wood grain. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's what we're gonna be using. I'm gonna be using this project panel. Um, I like it because it's already cut to size and it's the 16 inch by 36 inch. It'll make for a really nice big tray. And then I'm going to use these two um, project um, boards that are, I will link them down below. They're essentially a quarter by one and three quarters as you can see there. And that will work as the sides. And then I'm using a dowel that is five eighths inch for the handles. Um, you don't need a miter saw like this, but I'm using it because I have it. You could just use one of those hand um, miter saws and you can cut this by hand. This wood is so easy to cut. Um, and then I am going to be using the stain and polyurethane, staining it black, but you can totally paint this black or a different color of stain. It's up to you. And then I'm going to use a sander just to get it extra smooth. You could just use sandpaper. It's really not that necessary. Okay, first things first, we're gonna take the board out of the packaging because we don't need it. And then next we wanna choose the side that is gonna be facing up, um, the best side. And I think to me, I mean, it doesn't matter that much, but I think I'm gonna use this as the side facing up. So next up, so this is gonna serve as the perimeter um, for the tray. We wanna cut this to be the same length as this right here, because essentially we're gonna sandwich um, the inner part right here. So these already come cut here, but I always like to take a, um, a trim off a little bit on here just to get a nice and clean cut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that first. Of course, use safety glasses when working with this. So we put that up against there. Notice how nice it is on both sides. Okay, so now we're gonna be doing the long side and the long side is not um, too bad either, but it will be a little bit longer since we're gonna make some room for the dowel to go in. And essentially, there's no right or wrong here, but what I want is basically this space right here to be a perfect square. Um, I did some calculations. Um, I don't wanna confuse you. So basically, if you're using these dimensions, um, essentially the long side, you're just gonna cut it 40 inches because that's gonna account for the, because this right here is an inch and three quarters, so that will be an inch and three quarters here, plus the quarter inch right here, so that makes it a total of two inches. The whole board itself is 36 inches, so that means two of these. Um, on the other side, that makes it a total of four inches, plus 36, 40 inches. Wow, I'm smart. <laughs> um, not funny. Um, Okay, so cut two of those um, that are 40 inches long. Okay, 
so I went ahead and cut both out. And so um, one thing that I forgot to mention was, let me get my pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and mark a line here just to identify the square. So we want to measure a, an inch and three quarters because that's how wide this specific piece is. So, I mean, you don't have to get too perfect here. Um, I mean, there are ways to make a perfect square. I'm just gonna eyeball it. That's fine. And then the same thing for the other side. By the way, I am not a professional woodworker, although I have built some furniture. I made a really nice credenza. Um, I'm really proud of that. You can check it out on my Instagram, by the way. Um, so now we have a square right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and mark the center. One easy way to do that is just draw a, an X. Okay, so then now we have our center point. That is where we're going to drill. Um, do the same thing for all four sides. Okay, so now to ensure that both sides are even, I went ahead and taped these two sides together just so that they don't move around. And what I'm gonna do is, so now that I've located the center point, I'm going to drill a hole with this bit right here. And I'm using this 5 8 bit because that's how um, that's what the diameter is of this dowel and so when I drill a hole here I you know this is a detail that I really want to come out nice so I want to make sure I'm not um, splintering the wood so what I'm gonna do here is take another piece of tape but before I do that I'm just gonna sort of mark just like puncture it a little bit right here like that just to get the center marked and then I'll put some tape over it and you can sort of feel where the center is or you can just take a little pencil and just like poke it just so that you don't lose the center point so there's the center point and then I'm going to go ahead and just slowly drill in ensuring that the boards are nice and even right here and just start drilling and just take it slow. And again, that is why I have this scrap wood right here to ensure I'm not going onto the surface. As you can see on the back side, it kind of splintered a little bit. I could have probably avoided that by putting tape there as well. But if we remove that, you'll see how clean that comes out. So definitely put some tape on the back side. Don't do what I did. So now if I take my wooden dowel, you will see that it fits in there. It's a little snug, but you gotta just rotate it in there and I think it's gonna work just fine. So I'll do that on the other side as well. All right. All right, so next up, I want to go ahead and sand down the board because once I assemble it, and this is totally optional by the way, you don't really need to sand. Um, you could just sand with uh, regular sandpaper, not an orbital like I am. I just happen to have it, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to be using the 120. But the reason I'm sanding first is because once I have this all assembled, it's going to be a harder to get into those corners, especially with a round orbital sander. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. Um, and what you want to do if you're doing this is set a towel underneath an old rag or towel just so that um, I'll probably sand both sides because why not um, and it'll just help stabilize and not scratch what you already sanded essentially let's go ahead and put this on here I have a hard time finding the holes we want to use the attachment collect the dust and these sanders are so easy to use there you go now you could 
sand these, but they're already sanded. They're already really smooth, so I'm just gonna leave these as is, but you totally could. So now, so if we were to start assembling it here, you could just leave it flush like that. Of course you can sand that and make it nice, which I will do. But I kind of like this detail of it sticking out a little bit. So I'm thinking I might just do that and have it stick out like half an inch or so. But that's totally your choice. Um, so you want to go ahead and cut the dowel accordingly. Okay, so next up we're going to get ready to start gluing. And the glue I'm going to be using is the Elmer's Glue All. Now this is not the school glue, this is different. Um, I find it to be very strong. I used it to build my credenza. Um, and it's very strong once it dries. But before we start doing all that, we want to take our um, boards again. And we already established that it's 40 inches. Um, but essentially, if, even if you don't have 40 inches here, um, just find the midpoint and that is 20. So measure that out right there. Same thing on the board. And this is 36 inches, so half of that is 18. Mark that. And then take a square. You don't need to use a square, just something that is right angled, just to follow that point and mark a line, just so that it's perpendicular. And then same thing on this right here. Mark that line so that when we go in to line it up, you see how this line line up to that and it's perfectly centered. Um, and then do the same thing for the other side. I don't have large clamps that can clamp all this together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use some tape to clamp everything together nice and tight while the glue dries. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this off for a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and just take some tape. Um, and I'm going to lay it face side up. Um, the sticky side up. Here I'm going to use a little piece of the tape to hold it. Because it's a little windy outside. You shouldn't have a problem if you're doing this inside. Just to sort of hold it in for now. And... And you probably need three or maybe four. I mean, the more the better, honestly. Ah. Oh my God, you guys. So I went ahead and laid out a grid pattern of tape that is gonna work as our clamps. I don't have any clamps, nor do I wanna go buy some that are um, large. The sticky side is facing up. So essentially, I'm gonna put the board on there, centered, so once we start assembling it together like so um, what we're gonna do is take some of the glue and when we do the gluing process um, we got want to be as efficient as possible or else the glue will dry so that's why um, I'm taking time to set it up and so we're gonna glue here put it on there same thing for all of the sides and then we'll just take the tape and sort of wrap it in like that. Also, before we start gluing, I went ahead and put the dowels in on both sides, um, even further um, this way, so that when we put it on to glue, it's not gonna go in yet, but it's a lot easier if it's in now than try to put it all the way in after um, glue is. Now, when we start gluing, we're gonna put some um, on this side right here and then on the edge of the of the board. We don't need a lot, just a little bit. So here I go. Like this, just like a little squiggle. Get up close so you can see. Okay, and then just some on the edge right here. And this glue dries clear in case it seeps out. So we're going to go ahead and put it in. And then we're going to match that center line that we had done. Nicely like this. Okay. And then we're going to take our tape and clamp it. Like that. 
same thing over here. If the tape is too short, just it's okay. You just add a little bit more to it. Make it longer. And you don't need to um, pull too hard because the last thing you want is you want this caving in on there and then it won't be perfectly perpendicular. So just a little snug so it doesn't move around. And then we move on to the next side. Put some glue. Stretch it out. Then on to the next side. Some glue. That. Carefully take our tape. And then we're going to do the last side. What you want to do now is just check around if there's um, areas where you feel like you could use a little bit more clamping. That's okay. Just add a little bit more tape. Okay, so now that everything's nice and clamped up, I'm going to carefully bring this to my hip here and, and clamp it with my hands. And I'm going to try to put the rod in to the point where it's even on both sides. So that looks pretty good to me, as you can see. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, that looks just about right. So I'm gonna take it back to the table here. And really press down, make sure everything looks good. Again, add some tape where you feel need some clamp. And basically, you just look at the gaps. Like, you see those gaps? You want them nice and tight. Go ahead and let that um, dry for at least four, four hours before you come back to apply the paint or stain or whatever you're going to use. Okay, welcome back. So I essentially just left it overnight to dry um, and then I went ahead and removed the tape. I did, um, however, on one of the sides it was still loose so I went ahead and just applied some more glue. Now we're getting ready to stain this. And before I stain, I went ahead and gave it a light sanding again, um, especially in the areas where there was tape on there. I, I want to make sure there's no uh, residue from the tape. And also just with the um, sandpaper, just slightly just get the edges off here. The last thing you want is splintering your fingers. I will be using this Minwax Poly Shades Black, Classic Black Stain. I love it because it's stain and polyurethane at the same time. That way I can just do it in one step and save some time. You want to go ahead and use some gloves because it is a stain and you will not get it off your skin for a while. Um, and then I'm taking an old rag, um, preferably something with less lint. So I'm using an old t-shirt and I'm, after shaking the stain, I'm going to open it up carefully and essentially just dip the rag in there. This might require two coats, we'll see. Um, so I'm going to dip the um, stain in the rag into the stain and then just wipe it onto the tray. Um, <music> how it turned out.
hope you found this tutorial useful. I really enjoyed making this tray. It's probably my favorite so far. Give me a like if you did too. Also, be sure to leave me a comment below on what next DIY I should do next. I really like making these. Or maybe another home decor content video. Um, also, I want to let you know that I'm on Instagram. In case you want to go follow, I have more DIYs and home decor there. So thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all next time. Bye! Let me down in the com- Let me down. Let me down in the comments. Let me down. Dude wipes. I have dude wipes in my back pocket. It was a free sample at the store. Oh gosh. <laughs>